I'm on the run and I want to get off But they won't slow down the roundabout <laughs> Hi! Hey! Uh, it's us! It's Paul and Grace Yeah! And we're out for a walk And it's windy and slightly rainy A little bit overcast, sun breaks through This may not... This recording may not sound very good yeah, but you got the dead cat. I'll compress it uh, as best I can to filter background noise. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, what's happening? Uh, not much. <laughs> not much? And by that, by not much, I mean like almost nothing because we're at home under quarantine. Uh, Ragnarok is happening. Ragnarok's happening, yeah, basically. I'm going to well, switch hands. I don't know, a friend of mine uh, was pointing out, he, you know, he's been trying to find a place to live for some time now. He, you know, he's and stay in a shelter. He's been praying for about the last year for an asteroid to hit and just do a hard reset on the planet. <laughs> and he said, maybe I was thinking too big. It seems like a microbe might do a hard yeah. reset. Yeah. Well, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it all turns out. I, and I, I'm hoping to see some of the best that humanity has to offer. I'm sure we'll also see uh, some of humanity's most depraved underbelly. Yeah, forward. we'll just watch the, the daily White House press briefing. And yeah, that's pretty depraved. There you are. So, you know, these are interesting times. So, let's back up a bit and talk about our own timeline, how we got to where we are and what's happening. So, when did, do you recall when you first knew it was going down? It was just, it was a little bit, like a week after my birthday. I so, was like reading some, you know, I was just reading... Yeah, I like to I follow second, news. Second week in February. Second week in February. I, I like to follow the news on epidemics. Yes. Yeah, it's a personal interest. Yes. And I was kind of like, oh, oh, this could be a big deal, right? Yes. And I was kind of, what piqued my concern was that um, I had not heard of and was not aware of any precautions being taken in the United States. In the United States, like even at all. Right. And, um, and the way we managed to really not get hammered with MERS and with, eight, um, no, SARS, SARS yeah. was we took some serious precautions at our borders. Including screening people at points of entry. Yes, yes. And, uh, and you know what, and we really escaped, I won't say unscathed because people died, but it did not become a huge public right. health emergency. Right. And then H1N1 was it a did, little... There were states that never had a case. And, the, yeah, the states that never had a case of, of SARS or MERS. Yes. And a lot of people don't even remember MERS, honestly. Right. Um, and it did kill people. Yes, that happened. But, um... Not, the, not at this scale. Not at this scale. By a long shot. The, um... In, in, in about that time frame, I was starting to communicate with um, my company's management. Yes, R roughly, I think it might have been the third week of February, maybe, yeah. because I think that's when we started talking about it. Right, but, but I, I have been aware of this for some time because I've been attempting to work with a team in China, yes. in Hong Kong, and mm -hmm. half of that team, roughly, was locked down at home for, I'm going to say, about six weeks. Yes. And unable to get into the office. And access their tools and access the prototype hardware we had sent them. And so I had to set up a machine with prototype hardware in our office that I and attached to a computer that I left on overnight every night. So they could log in. So they could log in and work on it. Right. And trying to do that remotely was extremely confusing because it wasn't clear who was in charge or who was in which group and they weren't really like keeping us posted. Right. Like you need to be talking to these guys there going into the office. Mm -hmm. You know, but not these guys. Right. It was com very incoherent. But I, so I knew about all the people that were locked down. I knew it was going down. Right. In China. Right. And and you know, and, and also, I had some of that information, which made me a little more interested in checking out. Right. What was going on? And of course, I knew that global pandemics don't stay in one place. Right. Unless they're well managed. managed. Well managed. Right. And now I'm about to compare this to H1N1, which was a situation here and affected far more people, but it also started on this continent. It started here. So though that's going to be inherently harder to manage, like as China has discovered. No right. Internal border right. checkpoints kind of right. 
you know. So it kind of spreads the way people spread. Right. But we, again, were proactive, took some uh, precautions, and H1N1, while it was worse than SARS and MERS here, um, did, you know, did not become uh, just a real public health emergency. It didn't become a pandemic. Right. Well, it, it didn't become, it, it, uh, it did go national, global, but it, it didn't become um, the kind of emergency we're looking at now where the health, healthcare system can't function. Right. That did not happen with H1N1 because of the actions we took to prevent that. Right. So, so, so that's, that's where we were in um, February, and we were discussing amongst ourselves at what point we were going to just uh, go into quarantine for ourselves. for ourselves. And trying to say what would be the trigger, because we weren't getting good information. From anybody. Again, I was like sending, you know, I was sending my recommendations to the CEO, you know, I came, right, to my boss. Just a few ideas. Uh, Your boss's boss. To, yeah, up the food chain. And just mostly hearing, you know, pats on the head and soothing, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're working on that. Soothing words, but they, they weren't. They I did mean, nothing they, about it. They were it, working right. on it, but what they were coming up with was... How to cover their asses. ...was drastically insufficient. Well, yeah. And, yes. And really basic, more focused on um, covering their asses personally rather than... Financially. Um, yeah, rather than sort of like shepherding their business. Yeah, and keeping employees safe. Right. Well, and and that's the thing. If you're keeping your employee, shepherding your business, that should be the same thing. Th yeah, those should be have significant overlap. Right. 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 So yeah, even the guidelines we were getting, even oh, as our family was going on lockdown, were still like. Mm. They're just disinfecting more in the building. Right. They are not contemplating closing any... They don't, they don't expect to see the need to close any manufacturing facilities. That's literally was the was right. what they yeah, okay. were coming out with on the day when we went into quarantine. So, you know, if you want 20% of your staff to be hospitalized simultaneously, I guess that's something you could do. And they were saying this even after the first deaths in... New Jersey. In, in New Jersey, right. And after, um, I, I believe, I may have, you know, if not, if my timeline is wrong, it's only wrong by a day or two. Right. But after the the uh, National Guard locked down... New Rochelle. New Rochelle. Which 100 miles was, away. Yeah, less than that. Yeah. So... So not what I would call stellar, stellar leadership. And talk a little bit about how... Who, I, did we talk about this on the last one? You may have, I don't know. I don't, where, What's the question? who you were calling. Oh, um, I, I don't want to, uh, um, to, no, I don't want to toot my own horn, first of all. And second of all, it's I don't. It's not so much a matter of tooting your own horn as saying how we were just trying to. Trying to make something get happen? Get the word out and, and right. what the, when people are talking about now how, how like, what a great job Governor Whitmer's doing. Oh. We want them to know the story. Actually, the story, yeah. Um, so, and I also don't, I don't want to expose anyone to shame or gossip. Right. Um, but I well, will say... Well, leave out names of people that aren't public figures. Sure. And I will... So I, I called the local health department, because I know some people there, to make, pers to make a personal ask. I called the state health department, and I know some people there to make a personal, ha personal ask. I called uh, several bishop's offices to speak to the people that I know there. Trying to get churches to shut down, to shut down person, churches. In person gatherings. Right. I mean, if nothing else, all public gatherings. Right. And th now I wasn't doing that in February, right? Right. I was, like, we were evaluating, so what do we need to do? Because it doesn't look like enough's happening for ourselves. And then in March, basically the second week in March, uh, pardon me, the first week in March, I started calling my, my personal friends and just saying, I don't know what you've been reading. But it's time to start canceling any of your travel plans. It's not worth it. Yeah. And again, I was talking to everyone in my workplace. And I still had people saying, oh, well, I'm, I'm, I have a vacation scheduled in Boston in a couple of weeks. I'm, I'm going. Like, you better cancel it now cancel and try and get, get your money back. Yeah, because that's not it's happening, like, bro. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. This is all, all hope. Sure, Boomer, whatever you say. So the uh, so that second week in March, when it was clear that that, that no one was doing anything, right. like not only was I um, that I I don't know we had a responsibility to do something 
the people right. outside our family. Right. Um, so I started calling around state officials, church officials, um, all the nonprofits that we're associated with and work with on a regular basis, and started explaining that. Um, you were burning up the phone. I was burning up the phone and my email. That basically, th we have a moral responsibility to cancel every in-person engagement There's going not, forward. Uh, and and. And this is not like... Pretty uniformly, you were told that they were waiting for some kind of official guidance. They were waiting for some kind of official guidance. They hadn't heard anything like that. The CDC says we just need to wash our hands. That's that's literally what my manager told me. Literally. Just wash your hands. Just wash your hands. And so, um, which honestly was a joke I was making in January and February. Like, right. you know. But when it occurred it to me... It became not funny anymore. It's not funny anymore. Especially when, like, I was making that joke when I was assuming we were screening people at the damn airport right. and screening materials yes. as they came in. My first note to the CEO and whatnot was telling them they needed to get a nurse working in the building oh, and to yes. do spot checks of each of every employee and screen them every for week for for um, for temp take their temperature with yeah. a you know, and, and question them. The question about their contacts and, and what, you know, what and they come. also needed to immediately institute an emergency sick leave policy. Right. So people could just stay home if they were sick. Right. And even uh, and two weeks, like two weeks later, they still hadn't. And they were saying, "Here are your resources. Your resources were uh, state unemployment. You know, yeah. that's it. That's there you it. go. And um, Family Medical Leave Act. See." Right. They're, in other words, they were offering nothing, nothing from their own pockets whatsoever to try and uh, help their employees. And it's. Stay and healthy. I gotta say, I gotta acknowledge that that's actually to protect their employees in this context. It's actually an act of self-interest. Absolutely. That's an act of self-preservation. This isn't even about being a nice guy. Right. This is about self-preservation. No, they literally did not do a thing. They were not required to do by law. Precisely. And the only, all these extra resources, you know, they talked in advance about how they were going to give us resources for, and plans and all that. And everything they pointed us at was existing, was public. like public, you know, public safety net. Right. So, um, so, and my, my call, my call to action and my ask to people was to cancel every public gathering of all kinds and to restrict themselves. The gatherings no larger than, I was, at the time I was saying 25. Right. And so, right. Um, I largely fell on deaf ears. It cost me a lot of social capital. Right. Most of those people are too angry to speak to me now. Right. Right. Um, and when I asked, I'm like, by the end of the week, I was asking and begging them to tell me why they wouldn't act as members of the public health community, as people who, whose responsibility is to guard the public health. Yes. They have all the powers to shut down restaurants Independent of the governor. Talk about how public health officials actually have almost a shadow government with shadow uh, authority. So, the, the classic example that everyone's pointing to right now, that should give you some insight. The guy that shut down St. Louis during the 1918 pandemic was the uh, chief public health officer of the county. Uh huh. He had the authority to say none of you businesses have a license to operate anymore for public health reasons. You know that little sign that says number right. of occupancy? Right, right. He can make that number zero with his pen. Yes. And say you can't operate with the public here. Yes. Similarly, they have the right to do, uh, to do forced quarantines and to do forced isolation with the power of the state's uh, Armed, armed uh, uh, officials. National Guard, whatever. Not, not necessarily even that. They get the sheriff's office. The sheriff's office. It, because I think most states are organized by county. Yeah. And if it's the county public health, the the district they have is the sheriff, the county sheriff. Okay. Would enforce that and forcibly quarantine people to their homes. They also have the authority to order and manage testing. And you might have heard Stanford came out with a test. Colorado started doing drive-by testing. It was their local public health officials who took action to make that happen. So every single state and county public health official who did nothing. Just waiting for, just waiting some, for some kind of signal. Some kind of something. For every county and state public health official is like, oh, well, the CDC hasn't said this is a problem. I'm like, dude. You have the education you know to who's know who's running this. the White House. You know who's running the White House, and you know this is a problem. 
Right. There's no way you don't know this is a problem. You went through the same classes that, that you, you did. You did the same classes I did. You know what we're looking at. Yes. Yeah. So, um, and, and the example I have now to really put this in perspective for people who are like, but, 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 well, you know, if Heb Grocery Store can figure out in January what was going down and get it together. Wait, you can probably hear the frogs, right? Oh, yeah. Nature oh, yeah. is coming back. It is. So many places. So, um, but no, if, if a grocery store in Texas can figure this out in January and act accordingly, every state and county public health official had all the resources and insight to know what to do and how to do it. Yes. I mean, it was really straightforward. Every public health official could say, listen, the only places that can stay open are grocery stores, and this is how we're going to do it. Because one thing that's happening now, that again, public health officials should be doing something about, all these grocery stores that have dedicated hours for the elderly population to come in, some of them have them commingling with healthcare workers. Yes. <laughs> Which, yeah. I don't know, that, that should be a red flag for anyone. Right. <clears throat> But that's the kind of thing county and state public health officials should have the insight and the resources to manage, and they've been given the legal power to do so. So, and you might say to yourself, well, you know, how can they have these sweeping powers? That's... That's why. That, that's why, right? And we, and we actually don't want these sweeping powers... Sorry. To They're be held to by the sticks out of the road. We don't want these powers also. held by the governor. You don't want these powers held by the legislature. You don't want them held by the, actually the legislature wouldn't hold those powers, but or held by the, the county sheriff or the state police. Yeah. You want those powers in the hands of an epidemiologist at the public health department because they're only supposed to do this in case of a public health emergency. Right. And it's pretty transparent if they're just making sh shit up so they can have a power grab of some perverse kind. Right. And it's also pretty easy to roll that back if you need to because it's, how shall I say, it's a small seat of power. Right? right? It's a small it seat of power. It can be overruled by the governor's office. But it, it, takes, it takes like, there's, uh, how a shall process. I say? there's a process and you have to have like a triple check to roll back their powers. Yeah. Right? And also, every power that they can enumerate is, um, is limited by definition. So they have to, so they're going to say, we're closing all the schools, which they also have the authority to do. They have, right. they have the authority to close the schools. They could have done this before Whitmer right. closed the schools. Right. Um, they have the power to do that, and they could say, the schools are closed until X. And they can, so anytime they make an edict, it. right, they have to put something in that spot for when the end date is, when they make the right. the, the assertion. Right. And so just to be clear, those people not exercising that authority that as thoroughly authority. as they could, as thoroughly as they were able, cost lives. Lives. Thousands of lives. Yes. I'm sure you've probably seen the, if you're online a lot, you've seen the animation where there's one person who's infected and you see the three people they infect, right. and the three people they infect, and the difference just stopping one of those people in the chain makes yes. further down. Right. That so, it's remarkable. So those, the failure to act costs thousands of lives, and I really don't care what 45 is doing. If, if you are working at a county public health department and you can't figure out the situation you're in... You shouldn't be working there. I can't help you. I can't explain this to you any more, more profoundly than the facts in front of you. Yeah. Um, and I know that many of them are struggling with tight budgets. I understand that. The sweeping powers also allow them to tap into to public health money at the state level that's normally reserved for like Medicare and Medicaid and stuff like that. Interesting. So, and that's, that may not be the same in every state. Sure. But, uh... Yeah, their authorities probably aren't exactly the same in every state and every county. Certainly but, not, right. But they've got, a, they've got something. And, and honestly, if you read about what the, the public health department has the power to do and the authority to do, it's like breathtaking. Like, really? They're allowed to do that? They can imprison me in my home. Yeah, they can. Yeah, they can. And like, without due process. Yes, actually they can. But it has to be time limited and there's a procedure right. for appealing and whatnot. Exactly. You know. It's time limited, um, you know, etc. It's not a unlimited the power. The only thing I think they cannot do is compel treatment against your consent. That could be. I, I think that's yeah. the only thing they can't do. Okay. But they can imprison you in your home at gunpoint, and yeah. they can close every business in their jurisdiction yep. with a pen. So, and they have the and they have the sheriff to enforce it. So, 
That didn't happen, but Whitmer did yeah. eventually catch up, and she Slow has... Slow but sure. And she has now closed down the state, although we're still not entirely satisfied with... The closures. The closures, because she's not... She's not penalizing churches for gathering. She's not penalizing churches. And, and what else? She's transporting people. She's asking hospitals around the state to take patients from the hot spot of Southeast Michigan, which is the dumbest ass thing I think I've ever heard of in my life. Rather than set up centralized, like, overflow hospitals, like, you know, FEMA, and, and I, FEMA tent hospitals or whatnot. I finally read that they're taking over Cobo Hall as a temporary hospital for six months. They are. They're, they're, so they're starting to do that. I mean, so someone got to her and said, hey, absolutely not. We can't do that. We cannot transport sick people with COVID-19 all around all around the state. Around the we state. Can't imp- in fact, even people who aren't sick with COVID-19 who've been are at that hospital supposed to be lo- are not supposed to be traveling. They can't go anywhere else in the state. So this was all hitting the fan on a Friday. Yep. Um, that was like the second week. And at the end of that second week, we went on personal lockdown. Uh, no, I'm saying... Uh, oh, oh, sorry. What's the this? Friday I'm talking about is... is uh, the week after that, the 20th? On uh, Friday, um, what happened that Friday when I came home? I packed up, I got to work, and oh. this was all going down on Friday. That I was dr- Friday the 13th, actually. Friday the 13th. In I went in, yeah. and people are were finally saying, oh, yeah, Thorlabs had not, sorry, I shouldn't use my employer's name, fuck it, <laughs> Thorlabs had not, had, had not, had, they said they were studying a plan to allow uh, people work at, okay. some people to work at home, people who are able to work at home to work okay. at home. They were studying that. We're plan. thinking about that, yeah. yeah. Right, and finally, like, I went in and my a- manager was like, "Okay, everyone, go home. Oh, All the engineers, home. go home. Go home, stay home." So yeah. I packed up my laptop and stuff and came home and started working at home. And then the following Tuesday, oh, that, that was, was the day we locked down. Basically, that was the day we locked down. Yeah, yeah we locked down on Friday the thirteenth. Our personal lockdown. Yes. Right. And I worked, so during that next week, uh, we started doing video conferencing, which hadn't, you know, we hadn't really set up yet, but finally we're getting our our shit together to do video conferencing. I never did get to get on the VPN. Right. um, Because the IT was so far behind, and they had apparently all been sent home. Yeah. um, But couldn't get on the VPN to do their job or something. Some some stupid thing. Anyway, they were limiting VPN access. Uh, Mm -hmm. So we had a... Sorry, my hair keeps blowing in my mouth. Details. We had a difficult first week in lockdown, trying to work from home. Um, And then the following Monday, I got a text... That, coming in, bro? That said, are you coming into the office? I'm like, like, no, I'm not coming into the fucking office. Are you insane? The manager said, call me. So I called him, and he had been in conference calls all over the weekend mm-hmm. with the CEO. And uh, they were laying off all non-essential personnel, that is, whom they deemed non-essential for for production, for producing boxes. Right. So their entire R&D staff. In the Ann Arbor office, everyone involved in R&D was effectively laid off. Yeah. That includes support, right? You know, yeah. Like, um, so we were all furloughed last Monday. Yes, so we could go tomorrow. Um, with no... No warning, no, no severance. No warning, no severance. No paid time off. No, we not getting our paid time off or anything. And so suddenly my income dropped from, well, from something to nothing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so then Tuesday, I spent the entire day applying for unemployment. Yeah. And then trying to get in touch with every creditor. Right. To uh, hold them at bay. What? To hold them at bay. Yeah, including the gas company, like... The, the you know DTE our right. energies provider and even our phone provider you know like every every bill everyone hold, hold everyone who was going to be expecting a payment or charging us automatically yeah I can't do to that try right and now. hold them off right and Wells Fargo is the one that's proving to be of course the tough nut to crack tough nut to crack first of all I mean the unemployment Michigan unemployment site was crashing and crashing Left, and right and center hanging and taking you know 
because go figure suddenly every person in the state or like not like 10 percent of the state, state right was suddenly trying to apply for unemployment last week um but i will receive unemployment they have waived the work search like reporting requirement yep so i no longer have to report um jobs applied for which is good because i can't leave the house right um i can't be going to interviews Reviews. so a mask wearing gloves <sighs> they, they of course have no mask or gloves on because there's nothing happening right We're so big for jobs everything's normal uh so i have heard back actually from most from like several so f several deaths are basically suspended by suspended like you go to our bank's website it says we have a plan to help you out during this trying Good time, time. And then you investigate and say, can you stop payments on this for, say, 90 days? Right. And right. they say, they say, uh, yes, we won't charge you any late fees or report this to your, this to your, to your, uh, the, credit to the credit bureaus for being delinquent. Like, great. So you're just going to slap all that interest on, though. On the end. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly it. We're still making money, though. Right. <laughs> yeah, because we don't work. We, we just make money off of you. Right. And they're all that way. Yeah. So, um, so all these debts. Um, I'm tr trying to figure out how to cancel the automatic withdrawal April 1st right. for the mortgage payment. Um, Wells Fargo has not yet confirmed that they will do that. So Monday, I'm going to try to get the bank to just stop just block payments from Wells Fargo yeah. or withdrawals. I think you'll have like a, like, a, like a bounce fee. Withdrawals yeah. from Wells yeah. Fargo. Well, bounce fee better than... Better than all of it. Than $2,600 I can't... Can't afford right now. Can't afford. Um, yeah. So we'll be receiving $362 of Michigan unemployment, unemployment. which interestingly is the same it amount that it was at least 20 years ago. 1996, I think 24 years ago. 20, uh, 24 years ago. It has not changed in 24, 24 years. years. Because nothing's gotten any more expensive. Right, so why would you change that? I mean, right. Just, so, however... That was sarcasm. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway. However, we may be getting supplemental unemployment. Um, thanks to my boy Sanders! Thanks to... Well, not him, not just him personally, but he did stand up and, and threatened to block the passage, if they, wanted the passage if they gutted that provision. Right. He did not initially introduce that provision. Right. But he, he stood up for it and yeah. gave a fiery speech and shamed people into not doing that. So right. there it is. That's what he does. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, so there's that. So we may be getting supplemental unemployment. And we also may be getting a one-time stimulus check at some point. I'm not holding my breath. Very stimulating. Maybe in May. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I think they're supposed to direct deposit it if they if you file. If they have time. you... If, federal income tax uh, filed with direct deposit for your refund. They may just send it to, They may just way. deposit it. Right. But In which case it would come fairly quickly. Supposedly, but supposedly. again... But you know, there's all kinds of horseshit going on. Not holding my breath and... And save it. You know, it's with we have a number of kids, so that'll be a fairly substantial check. But... It, it will not even be a month's pay. Right. Um, will not even... Yeah. Be a month's pay, but uh, of my normal, normal uh, salary. Pay. Right. However, I mean, everything will help. Everything helps. So, but well, yeah. that's not really what people need is a one-time check. No, no, no. That's known as a bribe. That's a bribe for you to vote for him. In or a November. payoff. Right, right. Right. And, I, and this is what I think, on the one hand, you could say they don't understand. Yeah. I, I don't... They know exactly Their what's going down. staffers have a lot of spreadsheets. They right. know. They know exactly what's going down. They're not confused. Um, but you know the generous and charitable explanation is that maybe they're confused and they don't understand that this is going to last. What could a banana from, cost? Ten dollars. Uh, but this is going to last months. In the short term. Yeah. The short term shock is going to be months long. Right. Like not two months but three or four months and then long term we're looking at three years before we have a new normal and stable economy and the new normal will be quite strange for strange a while or right. possibly forever right 
So, are we heading back or? No, let's keep going. Yeah, because I kind of, I've wanted to do this whole loop yeah. for a long time, but I'm always nervous because I don't want to leave the babies for a long time. Right, so we're carrying, Grace is pushing a jog stroller with Eleanor in it, and I'm wearing a backpack carrier with yeah. Malachi in it. Yeah, that's just a little, little baby cough. Yeah. We're hoping it's all good and not a thing, but you know, he seems to be really fine except for his cough. Well, let's, let's get to that, everyone's health here in a moment. Yeah. But, but yeah, so, I'm trying to figure out what to do with myself and basically saying I'm not going to be rushing to apply for jobs. I'm not going to relocate. I'm, oh, not, I'm certainly yeah, no. not going to travel out of state to nope. take a consulting gig nope. like I've done before. And I'm not even planning to travel in state in the short term to yeah. take a gig. Right. Right. Oh. So it's also very unclear to me whether I will be rehired or not. I'm trying to maintain a realistic level of pessimism. Right. But um, it's also true that I was personally involved in the development of many of the our group's most profitable products. Right. And I provide all the tech support and feature development for upcoming products. Right. So, I mean, so yeah. I don't I can't make their decisions for them, but I know if I were looking around at who are the essential employees to get the business up and running again mm -hmm. in a, even a more limited mode mm -hmm. that I would be on that list for the Ann Arbor office. Right. My real question is, are they going to decide that they just need to pull the plug on this Ann Arbor mm -hmm. office? That's an open question because they clearly haven't done much planning. So they may panic and just pull the plug. Yeah. So far they have not. Um, so far they were just trying to, from what I understand, they realized that their catalog sales are declining to... To almost zero. To, to you know, zero. huge Drop. declines in, in revenue. Mm -hmm. And so they were looking around frantically to cut expenses at all costs. And they're also switching from a company that, that keeps, one, you know, keeps everything in inventory right. so that they can ship it the next day. To build the order. Or same day. They're switching pretty much all their bigger products, more expensive products, things that we build, uh, to build to order. Right. So, yeah, it's not clear yet how much revenue, you know, whether the business will remain viable in its current form or in a reduced form or whatever. Or what, yeah. And how they're going to manage that. Because they have a lot of offices overseas, too. Absolutely. Right. Right, so, and I'm now officially furloughed. Furloughed, I'm not privileged, I'm not privy to any conversations except my manager, you know, sends me emails once in a while to check in right. how we're doing. Um, but no, I, and I'm actually, I was like, well, you know, I have my laptop, I could just continue working on some of this stuff, but you know, you're actually forbidden. Oh, hey, right. Check that out. Mm -hmm. So you're actually forbidden when you're on furlough from working on projects for your employer, right? Because that's a huge liability. Liab well, also, it's, it's I think it's a violation of the labor. Sure, labor exactly. Act. Well, I mean, liability in that you could sue them for asking you to do that to work while you're not being paid. Right. And also, in exchange for future inducements, like hey, if you work for us. Now, for free, you can you have, have your job, job back. Later. Yeah. Are you think? That's huh? not legal. Not actually legal. And it really kind of exposes the nature of wage slavery as slavery. Right. So, I'm not working on stuff for Thor Labs, except I actually, I need to keep myself busy, and I would like to be able to do something to continue to enhance my career prospects yeah. in the future. So, I am planning to work on an open source project, which then will actually be of interest and use to me again as a Thor Labs employee in the future. Right. So that's what I'm planning to do with my time. In addition, not you know, get, seven kids at home is not easy, right? Yeah, no. It's not actually like I have all this free time, especially since the kids are kind of melting down. Yeah, in turn. In turn. Uh, Not simultaneously, time, right. which I'm grateful for. 
Well, anyway, well, they, they had the one day where they all melted down at the same time. So that's the income and employment situation. I expect to have enough in unemployment, um, enhanced unemployment payments, at least for the short term, right? And also food benefits, right? Which we shouldn't discount the value of. No, sir. Um, because it's very generous for a family of our size. It actually is enough, right? To feed everyone. Um, and possibly a stimulus check uh, at some point. I expect to have enough money Come to keep this end. going okay For with either not paying at all or paying a much reduced amount on our mortgage right. and debts. So that's where things are with that. Yeah. Talk about everyone's health a bit, maybe. Oh, so our housemate Joy is uh, like isolating in place. She has a uh, space on the lower floor yeah and so she's keeping to herself just to keep her health in check she's mostly keeping to herself right um and she has a little kitchen set up down there right in the bathroom so she's pretty good on her own um but you know she's the one who's probably the most vulnerable to this infection as yes. far as what the yes. what the health outcome would be if she contracted it right and then you and i are second and third something like that right and Eleanor's fourth yeah um not that she's not first in our hearts. Right, but, but as um, far as risk. As far as risk. Of fatality. Right, or significant illness. Yeah. So, um, and, and uh, but you know, she's, th there's a social toll on that. It really gets kind of weird to not interact as much as you normally would. Right. It's like weird and uncomfortable. Yes. Um, the rest of us all live on the same floor and interact a lot daily. Yeah. Several of us are small children. Whom you and I cannot avoid interacting with very intimately. Of course not. <laughs> right? Like in our faces, on in our, our heads, Coughing on our in our faces. Literally. Um, cleaning up diapers and... All you that, know. right? So, um, and, and as we've seen, as, as the record's borne out, this is primarily transmitted within family groups. Yes. So, like, it's kind of... So this is why yeah. actually staying on lockdown and doing things that other people seem... Ex may find excessive excessive extreme is so important to us yes. and i want to talk about a couple of those things in just a second right yeah so, so um, i'm checking that we're still actually recording we're recording yeah okay it's live is this live yeah Can you hear me? sometimes okay. it like stops or dies or something and so for the rest of us the children are in broadly excellent health uh veronica and sam had a cough for a little while but we've managed that and they're both on the mid they appear to be um, the babies about three weeks ago had a strange illness that was quite remarkable. It was a lot of GI trouble. They blew up. They were blowing up diapers with extreme prejudice and like several times a day, sh shooting out the sides. And it the was edge. kind of ridiculous and absurd. It was so gross. Um, I was trying to cover that with my saying it was GI. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think we should. I don't know, we there's visual. no, there's no polite. No polite way to describe that illness. Right. No. And they, they also clearly had some kind of sore throat or whatnot because yeah. about a week after they were ill, I was ill, and I had a sore throat and discomfort and GI right. trouble. Right. And it was like, whoa, no wonder they were so miserable. This feels terrible. Right. And, uh, and then... I had a little GI trouble. And you had that, right? Just a little, like for a couple days. And then um, after that passed, um, they, they seemed to be bounced back just fine. Um, but this cold and diarrhea is back for Kai. It's back. Right, and, and the coughing and the runny nose is back for Eleanor. And it's, it's I don't know how else to put this except to say it smells the same. Right. 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 So, I don't know what that means. We don't know what that means. Nobody's been out. Right. So the idea that we brought another virus, like a different, like a cold virus home or something, like, it's hard to credit. Right, know. right. Maybe on the mail, I don't know. But, you know. So... None, neither Grace or I or the kids have had a fever at all, and we've oh, yeah. actually been monitoring our temperature daily. like daily. And no one's had a fever. No all. one's had a fever. I have had, you know, it's hard to tell what's happening because we're paranoid now. Yeah. Right? What and is so, that? What like, is, oh, it's a fart. Sorry. It's also allergy season yeah. and still yeah. cold and flu season, both. So, I mean, any of these things can be, you know, warning symptoms. Right. However, I also had a weird round of tachycardia, which is still yeah. troubling me a bit with my heart racing, racing and my EKG a little abnormal. Yep. And I've been reading that that's a symptom. Yes. That you which can have you can yeah. have pericarditis and 
there's some other carditis. That's myocarditis. Myocarditis. These are infections in the lining of your heart muscle. Yes. Um, and that can be your only symptom. Yeah, boy. And so I You're think... like, did I have a heart attack? No. You had the COVID. <laughs> and I... So I think it's possible that we've actually had it. It's possible. A lot of people are saying that. I know a lot of people are saying that. And not all of us actually had it. Right. But some of us probably did. Yeah. So, I mean, it's possible. Just, I mean, statistically, I, I some of us probably did. I just don't know. But it's possible that we are actually... And the only way for us really to find out, I think, would be to do an antibody testing, titer, testing. a blood test for antibodies. It keeps coming back to testing, but... Right. Um, however, we are still... Uh, so the plan is, we're still on a tight, tight lockdown. We're not even going out for groceries until nope. for another week. Yep. Or any food. Nope. Um, because we still have... We stocked up. We have a lot of food in the house. Yeah. It's not necessarily everyone's preferred preferred food, but food. no one's going to starve. So, there's a lot. There's so, a we've lot. talked about health. We've talked about what we're doing. Talked about, I'm doing an open source project. Talk about our, our measures when we do go out. Woo! It's a pretty grim day. Yeah. Eleanor's baby doll just went flying out of the jog stroller onto the dirt. Yeah, she's... So this is very sweet. Eleanor went for a walk, so she got her baby dressed to go for a walk, too. She knew we were getting ready to go, so she put shoes on her baby doll and put a coat on her baby doll. And, yeah, yeah, because, uh, you know, baby wants to walk. The baby wants to go with her. Yeah. So she's hugging the baby. It's it's pretty sweet, guys. Yes. It's, so I'm going to get diabetes just... Just by walking. Yeah. You know, that's a risk factor. Yeah. Yeah. Having an adorable little daughter is a risk factor for diabetes. It is. Oh, I've lost 10 pounds, by the way. Have you, though? Hey! 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 hey. hey. Come Hi, off! Thanks. Thank you. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. This is some friends of ours from church, actually. Yeah. Good yeah. folks. Good folks. We are social distancing. Yes, we are. They yeah. just slowed down Slow and down rolled down the window. window. Little kiss from, from about 10 feet away. Yes. Which, you know, it's good social interaction. Yes. For these times. Um... Our precautions. So, yeah. mail. Mail. Um, gloves when you take the mail out. And out it's quarantined. Box. Yeah, it's quarantined for three days. Uh, three days. And you wash your hands after you put it away. I've, I've, I'm promoting a system where you take six paper bags. Right. And you label them Monday through Friday. Monday through Saturday. Monday through Saturday, yes. And, you know, Monday, so you take out Mondays on Thursdays, Tuesdays on Friday, and so on. Yeah, so you put it in the day that you get it. Right. Um, I've been also wiping down the mailbox with uh, bleach wipe. Ble bleach wipe. Uh, and, but yeah, you basically you don't want to touch the mail for three days after it arrives. Right. Now talk about, because this one is, people are mocking me for that. You know, you don't need to do that. Well, bless your heart. Yeah, don't good do luck. Um, you know, maybe it's overkill. Sure. Hey, it gives us something to do. Right. I, I, and you know, everyone was telling me that a mask and gloves were overkill. And look at us now, goddammit. So, talk about our protocol for going out to a store or in public. It's, so, I suit up with a layer of clothes over, uh, like, leggings and a long a shirt, right? And then I have a hat on, and I have a mask on, and I have plastic gloves when I go into the store. The mask is not an N95 mask. No. It's actually a fabric mask that we made. Right. And the, pur and the purpose of the mask, and really for all of is us, largely. the primary purpose for the general public is to stop you and train you not to touch your face. So you're touching things out in the grocery store or whatever. And then you reach up and scratch your nose. Yeah. And then you infect yourself. Right. That is so the, the mask, primary factor. The mask prevents that. It also... Right does something to protect in inhaling aerosol aerosolized yeah. I mean, it, it, particles. It provides, I mean, it's not no protection, right? Right. From that, but it's not like an N95 mask. It's not hospital right. level uh, uh, PPE. Right. And but, and we have got, we have done a couple pickups. Yep. No contact pickups where you open the, you know, wipe off the door handle of the trunk, open up the trunk. Mm -hmm. um, and oh, just uh, just to clarify back one step okay. is, I will touch the car and its environment with my bare hands and everything in the store with gloved hands and remove my gloves before I touch the car again. Yeah, right? and I've also been wiping down my steering wheel 
and gear shifter and other things, you know, dash, other things that I'm likely to touch in the car, including the radio buttons. Right. Right, with a, uh, with a bleach wipe. Right. And, and my phone with a bleach wipe. With a bleach wipe. Um, and this is in addition to hand washing and the sort, this is in addition to everything the CD says. The basic hand washing. Right, those basic things. That's, that's like a given at this point. Right, it's a given. And to be fair, those are real measures that provide real help. Yes. And are valuable all the time. Right. Every day of every year. I those mean, measures are good. They're good for colds. They're right? good for colds. And like, flu, yeah. not just COVID-19. Right. right. It's good for colds, flu, for each of us individually, for our personal health and for community health, to make sure your hands are washed, you don't touch your face, and, you know, you don't get too close to people that you're not, uh, you know, you don't, you don't live with. Okay. Right? Okay. That's so it. So groceries. So, oh, the, the no contact pickups. Right. Literally people put a box or bag in the back of the car. car. Right. They don't touch the car. They don't touch the, they car. Don't touch the car, you don't get out of the car, you they wave, you know, back. maybe right. you open the window and say thank you. All right, that's it. You pay over the phone, that's the whole transaction. You don't give them your, you don't hand them your card. Because yeah. that's going to be a thing. Right, or put it in the machine that everyone else is touching. Touching, unless you're going to wipe it down with a bleach wipe after. Which I've been doing when I've gone, in, like before right. we went on lockdown, right. I, for the for two weeks before that You've I was been wiping, wiping down, down your cards. Wiping down my cards, wiping down the contents of my wallet, yeah. the outside of my wallet, and wiping down and this really pissed people off. I would wipe down the pin pad. Yeah, yeah. Like I had some and I would, and I would clean the pin pad yeah. before I touched it. I just started to keep and the after. wipe in my in a, my pocket. Right. Which people are like, oh Ugh. I'm like, dude, dude. I'm trying to keep you safe. Trying too. to keep you safe. So yeah. anyway. And I've and you know, I've always been not a neat freak by any measure of anyone's imagination, no, yeah. but um, but I've always been kind of no a, one who saw our laundry situation would accuse you of being, being a neat freak. freak. No, no, not by a long shot. But I've always had this kind of thing about bugs, yeah. not not like creepy crawly bugs, but like oh, I love creepy crawly bugs. Yeah, some no, of my we're talking about bacteria, bacteria and viruses. viruses, bacteria and viruses. Yeah, has always been an the issue. Things for me. that you've always said mm -hmm. will kill you one day. It'll kill you. It's going to be a bug. Yes. A bacteria or a virus. Not a, not a spider. Not a spider, but a bacteria or a virus every time. So the rules that I have in my house and have always had about keeping your shoes off, I, and I've gone out of my way not to be a hand washing Nazi with my children. Right. I think that's unhealthy for our relationship. Right. But um, the two oldest, Sam specifically, um, is the one who listens to when I talk. Right. So he's got people mock him and say, "You're not getting ready for surgery. What the hell are you doing washing your hands?" Because he washes like he's getting ready for surgery. Well, because he's washing the way we've told well, him, to using the WHO guidelines. Right, to wash and to keep yourself clean, you know, for health reasons. Right. Um, and Veronica, only recently, I think about six months ago, was like, you know, I'm 15 years old. I need to stop acting like a toddler and wash my damn hands. <laughs> and she did. She started washing Good. her hands and being very careful with her hand washing routine and embracing the things I've taught her. Her entire life, actually. Yes. So, it's challenging, but um, so th those things are there, and I've um, I, I think it's been valuable largely, but I haven't been a Nazi about it. But um, not getting my kids so that they uh, are really good about this right. at a young age right. means we can't we've not been able to take them anywhere and keep them clean. Right. We can't. No, none of the younger ones can come with us on a pickup run or a grocery run or anything. or anything. Grace and I have actually been going together so we can kind of police each other right. and say, hey, you touched that thing. That's a thing, wash. Right. And be very, yeah. Because, you know, even, even the, the, it's easy the germaphobe to, that I am, it's, it's easy. easy to miss overlook something. And it's easy to touch your face. And break your quarantine or not handle your gloves properly. Right. It's very easy. So, yeah. So... Um, talk a little bit about what we're going to do with groceries, because that's controversial too. Oh, uh, yeah, we, I wash about about two weeks before, it's like, yeah, beginning of March, I started washing all the groceries when they came in the house. So, what you mean by washing? So, we've got a bleach wipe, and we put them all on one table, Yeah. and we wash an item with a bleach wipe all over the surface, yep. the outside surface, move it to the clean table, yep. and then someone, someone who wasn't washing puts it away. You also could, if you don't want to do this, you could put, if you have a garage, you, you just, could just put all your non-perishable items in the garage for three days. Right, and then go and get them. Not, no, none, uh, no virus particles should be viable on the surfaces after three there days, right. even on metal. Actually, metal, I think, is shorter. Right. So, so on cans and on paper. 
Yeah. So. The, so, I'm not sure what we're going to do with fresh vegetables. Fresh, fresh vegetables. Well, I'm not serving raw vegetables, you may have noticed. We're not. Yeah, right. we stopped getting bagged salads. Yeah, no raw vegetables. Because the people that bagged them probably don't have sick leave. So, right. And frankly, may be transmitting before they are conscious they are ill. That's another thing about this virus. First of all, two main factors that make this one particularly virulent, you know, literally is what the word means, yeah. is um, the length of time that you can be uh, tr contagious before you even have symptoms. Is sometimes a week. And also the number of people that, that you tend to infect is much higher than the flu. Right. Which is why the, that curve is going exponential. Right. You're not just infecting one other person, right? It's usually it, three. It's usually three. Roughly. And with the flu, it's like 1.3. Right. It's just over one. So, which means maybe you infect one other person. Yes. But it's not guaranteed. Mm-hmm. So, so what this means with your groceries is um, you probably don't want to eat any raw food. This is not a good time to get sushi. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, get some sushi takeout and, you know. Or I guess if you get, so frozen food should be fine if you frozen just can, you know, keep the outside clean. Right, keep the outside clean. Um, frozen packaged food. Mm, we don't know how it deals with freezing, but uh, anything you're going well, to cook yeah, is fine. Yeah, but you're going to put it right in the oven. Right, you're going to put it in the oven, right. So, so in, in the fresh food, you don't necessarily need to wash any more than you normally would, but it does need to be cooked. Right. Um, and sauteed and brought up to temperature right. to kill any viral. COVID uh, does not, COVID-19 does not, or the, that's the disease, so the terminology is confusing. The virus, right. um, SARS-CoV-2, whatever, COVID two, right. two, um, is uh, vulnerable to heat. It doesn't even take that much heat. It's don't like 130, 140 degrees or something like that. I, I think it's 110, but, you know, don't quote me. It's not very yeah. much. Boiling, right. you know, even bringing up to boiling temperature would kill it would quickly. Kill it. right. Not, so, and not even kill it. That's the frustrating thing about talking about viruses. It it's causes the virus to be the the virus molecule, neutralized. the pouch, to become non-viable, right. break down. Right. So it's still there, but it can't infect you. It loses its um, lipid coating, mm -hmm. and then it breaks apart. <laughs> it oxidizes. It's a, really fundamentally, it's a particle. It's not even really a living thing. It's not really a living thing. It's a complex molecule with a lipid envelope. Yeah. It's very bizarre. Yeah. If you're stuck at home and you're not horrified by reading about it, oh, you should studying do the reading. about viruses is Absolutely fascinating. fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. So we're almost back. It's almost back home. Oh, just the last thing about food is don't be afraid of your food. Wash down the containers they came in. Yeah. And, um, or quarantine or them. Let them. Or stay in quarantine. And, ma and make days. sure that if it's something that hasn't... Um, it, it, it needs to be cooked. Now, how about takeout? I'm not doing takeout. Why not? I'm not doing takeout because the people who are preparing and packaging and, deliver, packaging and delivering the food yeah. um, probably don't have the sick time they need yeah. there's to no, not expose you to the virus. There's no way that, like, you know, pizza coming out of the oven or deep fried fish coming out of the fryer has it, any is, virus is, infection. is is infectious. Not anyway. But it's then handled. Is it handled by someone who puts probably it in a container. doesn't have paid sick time? Right, and, and I'm sure it doesn't have PPE. Doesn't have a mask. Doesn't have, have gloves. gloves. They, they oftentimes have gloves. they do have gloves. They have now. gloves, and and that's a public that's a public health regulation. Right. That they have to have gloves. Right. So again, the public health department right. could have regulated this, and everyone needs a glove and a mask immediately. Right. Right. And you but can't say one for business without providing it. But right now we are saying, no, it's, I don't know, we may loosen this restriction a bit at some point. But right now we're saying, no, it's not even worth getting takeout. It's nope. not even worth the risk. No, it's not. Which is... <laughs> and takeout is still, uh, quote, legal in Michigan right. under the new guidelines. Restaurants are still open for takeout. takeout. Some are. Some are. Some have just closed. Right. Some, some probably went out of business after three days. Right. Of shutdown, you right. know. So this... Um, and I'm beginning to wonder, do you think my own coffee works as an essential business? I do, but <laughs> yeah. I does anyone agree with me? We f felt it especially hard because Grace and I had a ritual of driving to Milan to support a small local cafe. And roasting. And roasting company called Milan Coffee Works that makes the most blissfully delicious, like, oat milk lattes with fresh roasted beans. Oh, oh. Just stop. Yeah. Stop. That's been... Ripped away from us. That's been particularly hard to take. Yeah. 
Um, I can live without... So many things. So many things. And I can live without that too, honestly. But that special ritual of going out for a really lovely latte and, and also having a drive together and, and talking and together for a, a short date, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that is... I, I feel it. that. Yeah, I miss it a lot. I also feel my lack of egg salad sandwich on whole wheat toast at yeah. Joe and Rosie's yeah. Yeah. for breakfast on my way to work. And I'd make you an egg salad sandwich on whole wheat we toast. We can't except. have eggs in the house. That's why I was going out. Yes, yes. Anyway, so, so we're going to wind up. But If um, that's the extent of our suffering, we got off easy. That's the extent of our suffering. The thing is... We don't know how this ends. No, we don't. And this is just the first chapter. This is just month one. Month one. And this is probably going to be 18 months of at least... Three, of, three years. Yeah, of severely disrupted, like, either lockdown or alternating periods of lockdown and partially open right. up. Right. You know, um, and it's going to change everything. It already has. It already has. And um, it is still going exponential yeah. in Detroit, in New York, in Louisiana, in Washington Florida, State. in Washington State. Yeah. And we're starting to see images now. I think people are starting, it's sinking in that they're filling up refrigerator trucks with bodies. Yeah. Yeah. So this is real and it's grim. Um... I want to thank the Metropolitan Opera <laughs> so much for live for for doing a daily free Opera. live stream. As soon as it's I not live stream, saw, but like a well, it's a it's a repeat. A re, yeah, it's a, it's a a rerun of a live of a live uh, of a live stream that they did previously, right. and that's been a godsend for us. Although it's driving the kids crazy. Well, it's driving one kid crazy. One kid crazy. Several <laughs> of the kids really like it. But it's driving one kid crazy. But I've loved it because I think that we haven't had access to classical music at home for a long time now, years, right. decades. Well, we have a lot, but it's hard but to hear anything. It's hard to hear it, and no one. And also, we get complaints. When you know, oh, if we yeah, put on yeah. whatever, the kids start making as much noise as possible to yeah, protest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but the live streams have been really cool, and we can't thank them with a donation at the moment. But, man. but when I have like, hang on. Any disposable income again? As soon as I feel comfortable that we're in a safer place Financial. with income, right. I'm going to buy a copy of the Blu-ray edition of The Ring Cycle. Yeah. It costs 150 bucks, but we've gotten, every penny. we've gotten uh, a lot of enjoyment from the Met. Not just those operas, but yeah. many others. And next week they're showing Nixon in China, and I'm... Stoked? I'm... Fixing the bust. Fixing the bust. Oh! <laughs> no, Kai thinks it's really great. Now Kai's awake. Awake and cooing and smiling. Yeah. Okay, so we're coming up on one hour. Yeah. Um, Hitting up our driveway. Uh, in addition to working on an open source project that has like dual use potential, I'm not even going to try to explain what it is because it's highly technical of interest only to embedded software engineers. Okay. Um, yeah. But. In addition to that, I'm working on podcasts and live streams, and I've already started with that. You can check on Facebook. I'm starting to record stories with right. live mixed music. Oh, you can do that podcast with Elias now. I can probably do that podcast with Elias. Yeah. i got to read the, finish reading the book. Reading, reading is really hard. I'm very distractible. Why? With anxiety. Oh, really? And <laughs> even after going off coffee... And ha yeah, still anyway. Still wired. Still wired. It's, I'm trying to limit myself to only... I'm trying to restrain my shit posting. Yeah. Because I just want to scream at everyone on social media. Yeah. Um, about politics. Yeah. And I'm trying not to ruin any more friendships than I already have. Yeah. Um, and... What else? Good question. You're oh. trying. You're every day in contact with a lot of your friends, and, and yeah, yeah, we're also acting as a like a a sounding board and a resource to a lot of a lot of students who are isolating in place by themselves. Right. I have friends that I talk with. You have friends that you talk with. And they're just keeping them keeping their spirits up daily. The kids have had access to some of their 
usual activities with via Zoom, um, via Zoom with like the support groups put together by their choir, which has otherwise completely shut down all you know activities, right? right. right. And the church youth group via Zoom. Right. So, anyway, we're back home. I think we're going to call it, and I'm going to try yeah. and get this out today. Thank you all for listening. Thank you. Talk soon. Bye-bye.